Joe, you know, I do so much editing all day long that uh, uh, every night I sort of clear stuff around midnight or one or whatever. And I just got up at uh, this morning and 9 a.m. Log logged on and I deleted the questions that, that I <laughs> set, mate. So we're going to have to wing it, all right? It's just like you on stage. Oh, we're doing it live. So I apologize in advance if there's some, if it's missing a few, you know, deep and meaningfuls. But anyhow, let's, let's go on through. Um, yeah. let's, let's start with some, some uh, starting stuff because there's always new fans and people that are trying to discover. Uh, have you always wanted to be a musician? Is that something that started early and, and worked its way through? Uh, yeah, I would say that's, that's an accurate assessment. I feel like when I was younger, I had that dream of, you know, being a rock star. Um, yeah. but then I, Aces. I remember also wanting to be a scientist, but that didn't work out because I got terrible grades. Boom, boom. Um, it was either those two or I wanted to be a professional freestyle motocross rider. And um, okay. so, yeah. And you found the songwriting came easy or did, was it something that was like a developed sort of process that took a while to sort of you know, I when I was younger, I thought it came easily until I got older and I listened to my recordings from when I was 12 and 13. And I can assure you, those are rough, those are rough. So, um, yeah, I definitely worked on. And and Vermont, that's Northwest, yeah? Northeast, yeah. Northeast. Okay, yeah. Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow or Thriving Metropolis? extremely sleepy hollow yeah, uh, yeah is, so is that where you is that where you started your music career or did you actually move like people do to nashville or something rather to sort of get it get it cracking no you know i've always been in the northeast um i was i was born in boston okay. um and i was in massachusetts and i've, I've been and i just gradually moved further and further north further and f further into the woods and um, here I am um, in a town of less than 2,000 people. Probably, it's probably one of those things that sort of grounds you and helps you write better music because you stay within yourself rather than get caught in all the external stuff that's always, you know, both are good, I suppose. But, you know, in your case, looking at your history, it looks like it probably served it, its purpose. No, you definitely. Yeah. It's just my, uh, my preference too, you know what I mean? I like the, I like the peace and quiet. Absolutely. Is Vermont the, the place where Newhart was recorded? Do you remember Newhart? Bob Newhart, the, uh, you probably don't remember. It's about 30 or 40 years ago. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay. How would you describe your sound? How would you describe it? Uh, like if someone yeah. asked you, what, what do you, you know, I saw the genre bending in the description or whatever. So how, how would you just describe your sound? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, each record sort of sounds different. Um, it's this this upcoming record that I just finished uh, is, is a lot heavier, leans more on the post hardcore, um, new metal side. But I I'd say as an umbrella, it's safe to just say experimental because okay. I can never one genre. So and 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 it looks like you've developed some pretty strong popularity. Why do you think your fans resonate with with your music? What is it? Is it is it performance? Or is it mm. a mixture of, uh, you know, they love what they see and then they listen or they've listened and then come to love what they see? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I just think I'm just honest in my music. I'm vulnerable and I just, I'm just speaking my truth, really. I'm just presenting myself as just a guy who plays guitar and makes music and I'm going through life trying to navigate just like anyone else. So I think people can relate to that. So how do you deal with, you know, just jumping off a, a little bit, how do you deal with all the collaborations? Like you've had some pretty serious collaborations and how do you, how do you sort of keep your feet on the ground as you keep on being introduced to these, you know, wow, 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 wow sort of situations? Because, you know, most most artists, you know, 60,000 songs a day on, on Spotify, they're all sort of at the bottom end trying to eke out, you know, $10 a ticket sort of thing. And you're up there going crazy. <laughs> yeah no i just try not to get a big head or anything i just remember uh where i was when i started you know just started playing guitar and going to lessons when i was 12 and started recording myself at the same age 12 years old and i just try not to overcomplicate it i just i just uh you know i love making music and i've been fortunate enough to uh make it a career and have it be my actual job and that's mm -hmm. like well, working 
the collaborations, man, I mean, that's just been a dream. And, and uh, I've worked really hard to just get to a point where I can um, write with some of my idols. Which one? Which one? Is there any one that sticks out that goes, oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would say when I was first going to Travis Barker's house. Trav, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a very surreal moment for me. And uh, just just knowing that I could get to that point. And, and now on the new record um, coming out, I, you know, artists like Pete Wentz um, and just, you know, Buddy from Census Fail and uh, some other features that are on the album that I haven't announced yet that I'm just really excited about. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of pinch me moments for sure. Well, I'm sure the, the fans can't wait. Um, uh, and who, talking about, uh, non collaborations, I suppose. Who inspires you? Who's, who's who do you look up to, or who do you listen to? Just before I say that, I suppose Vermont helps that too. Going back to a sleepy old hollow uh, at home probably keeps you pretty, you know, down to earth, etc. You know, because you don't keep in that bloody big, big mix, big hullabaloo. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's definitely. I mean, it's a. I definitely live here on purpose, and that's one of the many reasons. You know, it's a traveling the world and uh you know being in a different country or a, bi or a different state um most days when you're on tour can get really overwhelming yeah. and i think have a quiet um place away from everything helps my mental health because if i were to you know if i were to do a, a month and a half two month tour and then come back to a bustling metropolis i, I don't know how i'd really care and the music industry is ravenous, so they're, they're trying to make money from you. So when they smile at you, you're not quite sure whether they're smiling in these different countries because they're trying to get something out of you most of the time. Yeah, I mean, not to sound too like woo or so, too pseudoscience, but I really think you got to protect your energy. You know, I feel like... Um, absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's so the... Go on. No, I was just going to say, you know, when you go to these, these, these cities... Um, New York, LA, maybe Chicago, definitely like Nashville, these music cities and, you know, people, they want something from you and it's very, um, it's very hard to navigate. So it's good to take a break and have a place to go away from that. Sure. And, 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 you know, everyone's, everyone in the world, you know, if you go Tolly, they've just got the moment, you know, you, can, you you've only got you and the moment in collaboration, whether you're in a prison cell like Mando. <clears throat> like Mandela or whether you you know the king whatever you are you've still got to deal with the moment and there's plenty of people who've seen them recently jump off bridges and you look like they've got the perfect life they've got everything going for them so you, yeah. you're in the same boat you're in the same boat and I was gonna I'll, I'll get to that in a second I was gonna say uh, I'll ask the next question in conjunction with I was gonna say who inspires you etc more to the point you've got you've done four albums yeah yeah how have yep. those, those albums, how have you progressed through those albums and what sort of influences, you know, uh, have you had uh, as you progressed? Yeah, well, I mean, I started off just recording um, my own albums um, in my parents' basement uh, when I was younger and I would self-produce everything and, you know, do the artwork and do the music videos and it was yep. fully DIY. Um, album one or album one and two? Uh, mostly album one. Yep, yeah, definitely album one. And then I ended up signing to a record label. Um, and then I was like, okay, I have some money now so I can I can actually go to a studio and I don't have to record in my parents' basement. Um, it was a breakthrough, wasn't it? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I would say I had these two records, Reaper and Ruiner, that sort of went in tandem. Um, and that was really a breakout for me, uh, especially Reaper, um, when I got to collaborate with, uh, you know, Chris from Dashboard Confessional. And oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah there's a, there a lot of moments um, where the sound just took off in a different direction because I had access to a studio and I had, time you know i could i quit my job so i had more time to work on my craft at an accelerated speed and so and, I, and that progression you look back and you see that it's been rising or is it rise and drop and rise and you know how, how are you feeling about your songwriting over that four four album period yeah it's 
Yeah, it's funny. I'd say technically, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a much, I'd say I'm a much more sound and proficient musician that, that I was when I, you know, recorded my first albums. Um, but it is funny because you worry if you're, you know, as you're a musician and you're becoming more successful, in theory, your life is is going better, right? So your life, right. things are going right, you know, um, you're selling records, you're touring, and that can be dangerous in a way because you're lacking that sort of, <laughs> you're lacking the suffering that made the it. intro material. But at the same time, what I had to learn how to do was, you know, I'm, I don't ever want to be in a place that I was when I first started, when I was really struggling and had a lot of mental health hurdles. So now I just look back. A lot of my material is in retrospect and remembering the dark places that I was. And it was, uh, was Trauma Factory, was it? Yeah, yeah. A lot of that, all of Trauma Factory really, really was me looking back on um, some of the, the tougher times in my life and um, reflecting on a safer place and not being in them, which I would prefer. <laughs> I think I think the difficulty, and you see movie stars and all that do the same. They have a cracker movie, and then they try and make five of the same thing to try and take advantage of the fact that it was a cracker. I'm sure that the money music situation is sort of saying that was fantastic. Do another one, and you creatively want to move on, and you get pressure from above to sort of say, uh, "I'm not sure. Why, you know, it doesn't sound like the last thing, which went crazy. You know, that sort of thing." Yeah, that's dangerous. Honestly, that that is a dangerous mindset when you when you mix money and art, you know, it's like mixing, you know, oil and water. And, you know, if something works, people will try and keep capitalizing on it. But at the same time, you're not progressing as an artist and you're not creating what I think you should be creating. And that's just being in the moment and, and being honest with yourself. So it's, it's yeah. Look, I'm a I'm a, I'm a conscious dog, uh, you know, I'm 64. Uh, I'd love to, at some stage, have a longer talk to you about that uh, conscious side of things because that would be a very interesting discussion. But we don't have time today. Um, moving on quickly, we better talk about this tour that's coming up. You've got, you've got a tour of Australia. What are, you, what are you looking Have you been here before? This is my first time ever in Australia. Uh -huh. So, excited. Yeah, for the kangaroos. You know, you walk down the main street, you get knocked over. No, I don't know what what i'll do the first time i see a kangaroo but uh yeah I, I don't know i don't know what to expect other than it's going to be a lot warmer there and um the fans are mad they'll, they'll love you don't worry about that because they're crazy down here and i think most people that have toured if you've asked them will say that they have a pretty good time down here because they go a bit mental up here you know they might be a bit more reserved in america but they're not here they go crazy I'm excited. Yeah, I've had I've had friends tour in Australia and they said I'm going to have a blast. So um, I'm really excited. What can they expect? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm bringing my band. Um, I have my my guitarist, Blake, my bassist, um, Bert and my drummer, Taylor. And uh, yeah, I think what people can expect is just a different take on uh my recordings really i try to make them different and heavier and just a, a new experience it's definitely not an act where it sounds exactly like it does on the record and that's on purpose you know i like to try and make it sound like a new experience so yeah we'll play some old stuff some new stuff and um yeah there should be some some fun surprises in there as well terrific and and if you could bring anybody out or <clears throat> if you could bring anybody out past or present to play with on stage, you know, have them walk out from the back and sort of say, and now I'd like to introduce, you know, Lady Gaga or something, rather. <clears throat> who would it be? Um, for the me, off, off the top of my head, I could say uh, Chester from Lincoln Park. Ah, of course. What a choice. Massive yeah. choice. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right. Uh, long-term aspirations because obviously you know you've been going since 15 eight years it's not a long time when you talk about you know the rolling stones what yeah. what 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 else do you want to knock over what else do you have you know what what hurdles do you want to jump yeah i mean i just want to keep progressing as an artist i want my next song to be better than my last and i want to just continue that trajectory and whatever happens happens you know um I am fortunate to have made it to this point and I just want to share my music with more and more people. And that's really it. 
a lot of a lot of uh, entertainment crosses over these days. You got any interest in moving into you know the the TV movie sort of genre if you keep on you know exploding? Yeah, I mean, I I graduated from film school and that was uh-huh. what I I was the filmmaker for a while. Um, and I worked at an ad agency for a long time, so I I all, will always have a love for cinema. So who knows? Maybe a uh, couple years we keep the trajectory up. Who knows? Maybe I uh, I could work. Tom Hanks. With... Yeah, exactly. Okay, we've got a couple to finish off. Just a few more. Uh, um, w- w- what what piece of advice would you give to an artist starting out? Given you know your your journey. Yeah. Um, I would say just you need to create authentically and the audience should be the last person you consider um, when you're making a song. So if you're thinking of the audience and what someone else thinks about your song, um, you're not going to be creating an authentic piece. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's a trap that I fell into a lot when I was younger was how, what are people going to think about this if it doesn't sound like the last song and this is different than that. You got to get out of that mindset because that's when true growth happens. Best thing about performing to a live audience? Best thing about performing to a live audience would be just hearing people sing your lyrics back because a lot of the times I just make the, the yeah. songs by myself and to hear these people singing it back from around the world, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a super looking, crazy. And looking for a Queen sort of live aid, uh, you know, Wembley sort of performance or something where you've got a crowd that's just moving in masses. That would be, yeah. be a pretty cool thing. What's been the career yeah. highlight? I would say making this this latest record. Um, I haven't announced it just yet. I'm about to. I'm about to announce the release date. But I think it was really special because I have all of these memories of the past eight years and I made my best record in my opinion yet. And I made it here at my house in my barn. So. Uh, fantastic. Um, Sounds fantastic. Uh, we, I'm sure the fans, everyone look forward to it. Now I've got some quick questions for quick answers and we're done. These are the things that people hate because basically, you know, puts them on the spot and they say something that they regret later. <clears throat> Pardon me. So favorite album. Favorite album. And you can say not no, just say no if you don't want to say it because ultimately I don't want to uh, put you on the spot and you say something that yeah. Uh, I think a safe one would be the self-titled American Football LP. Uh huh. Artist. Favorite artist. Don't don't, uh, don't make any enemies. Yeah right. Ah, uh, oh man, that's tough. Top of the head, come on. Or you can uh, say pass. Say pass. Uh, I have to pass. Pass. <laughs> Favorite movie? Favorite movie, Tommy Boy. Chris Farley. He's sensational. You know, under under underrated. If people knew him today, you know, he was a superstar. Uh, favorite yeah. place to visit? Favorite place to visit. You're building uh, up at the moment, aren't you? You're getting around. Yeah, I would say uh, Prague, Czech Republic. Venue to play. Favorite venue to play. Uh, Paradise in Boston, Massachusetts. Favorite food. Favorite food. It's got to be pizza. Drink. Kombucha. Uh, favorite. Two more. Favorite person in history. Oh, favorite person in history. Um. <laughs> I would say uh, Siddhartha Buddha. Yes, the great Om. And uh, yeah. and uh, do you have a tattoo or a number of tattoos? You do, obviously. I see on your neck. I have um, I have a lot of tattoos. Uh, I lost count. <laughs> All the way through. When did you start getting them? Uh, I started getting tattoos when I was eighteen. Um, and are they? And, uh, like- are they spiritual? Like when you get them, like, like you know, you, they represent something and, you know, they're like meditative. You sit down and you're actually, they're a part of you and all that. They represent yes. a part of your life. It's the most painful meditation you can go through. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I just think it, yeah, it represents just chapters in my life. It's, a, it's like a storybook. 
Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. It's been it's been a pleasure. And like I say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a series called Conversations with Dave at one stage, and I want to get into a bit of the feeling sort of stuff because some of that sort of stuff really opens up uh, and and tells people about what an artist's like and why they're creating what they're creating and what's next and all that sort of stuff. And this whole business is about feeling. Someone's got to feel you to follow you. And if they don't feel you, well, then uh, there's, we're, we're in tick, TikTok world where their heads just go all over the place. So <laughs> I'll, I'll look forward to talking to you at some stage in the future. And and yes. you'll share this when I put it up, won't you? Because we've got to get some views on the site. No, I appreciate it. This was great. I really appreciate it. Good on you, brother. Uh, can't right. wait for you to come down. Wish you every success and uh, keep on discovering more about yourself. The Thank world, you. The world wants that. <laughs> Thank you. Like Thanks, you. Janine. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for the Jane. opportunity. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All the best. Bye. Bye now.